Hey everyone, it's Carissa at Sprinkled With Glitter. Thanks for joining me today. Today is the release of the brand new products from The Essentials by Ellen Line. And you guys, there's a leading gentleman. <laughs> I know that's going to be so exciting for a lot of you because it's something that you've all been asking for for a really long time. He's finally here. He's adorable. And I love the ways that you can customize him. Now let me quickly tell you, I am traveling right now, so the sound is a little bit different, and I do apologize for that. I'm in my hotel room. I just could not bring that microphone with me. <laughs> so thanks for sticking with me. Now when I saw this guy, I knew I wanted to make a masculine type card. And I have to tell you that one of the questions that you guys ask me the most is, can you give me some ideas for masculine cards? And I'm going to give you one today, but I also want to give you some tips and tricks for creating your own designs for masculine cards. Now, I am starting out with masculine imagery, and that is one of the first things that I recommend that you do. Most of the time, we're not going to grab a floral stamp set and try to make a card for a guy. Now, if you can do that, more power to you. But I think that the easiest way to kind of create a masculine card is to start with the right imagery. Now also, you'll see as I go throughout this card that I'm going to choose a color palette that leans a little more masculine. Now that doesn't mean I'm not going to use pink because you're going to see pink on this card. But my primary colors are going to be like navy and some more neutral tones. And you'll see that brought in throughout. So when you're making a masculine card, you may want to choose a color palette that's a little more masculine. Some darker colors like blacks and navies. Some craft is always a good color to bring in and gray as well. And you can also maybe customize the color palette to like his favorite sports team or something like that. So that's always a fun idea for you as well when you're creating masculine cards. Now you're seeing me stamp my leading gentleman, or I should say parts of him, again onto some pattern papers. And bringing in these patterns, especially this plaid pattern, gives it a little bit more masculine feel. Now you'll notice the plaid has a little bit of pinky red tones in it, but that's okay because we're combining it with some stronger colors to kind of tone that back. Now, quite honestly, I was in a hurry when I created this card, and to me, not only was this a great way to bring in some pattern, but I thought this was a great way to save a little time because for me, paper piecing this image was a lot quicker than coloring him. I am the slowest colorer on the planet Earth. <laughs> So I thought I could just paper piece his outfit and you'll notice I even stamped him partially on the card front so that I wouldn't have to deal with shoes and picking out colors for that or coloring that. So I was really strategic when I placed him on my card front and just partially stamped him on the card front as well. So now I'm taking my little detail scissors and I am cutting around just the pants portion of this image here. I'm going to cut those out and you're going to see that I am going to place these on top of that stamped image and then it's going to fill that with color and pattern and it was super quick and easy. Now, I didn't cut it perfectly. There's a part between his fingers that's white still, but I'll show you how I'm going to fix that here in just a little bit. But in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and cut out his shirt as well, and don't forget to cut around the neck portion of this when you're doing this paper piecing. So once I have these images cut out, the shirt and the pants, I can go ahead and color his face and body and hair. Now the cool thing about this is because I am paper piecing over the top of this image is I don't have to be super careful where his arms overlap the shirt and that sort of thing. Now on the head I have to be a little more careful <laughs> obviously but I'm not really super worried about coloring outside of the lines where those arms overlap the shirt. Now for his skin tone, I'm using some E50, and then I'm coming in and adding some shading with some E11. And because I'm customizing this to look like my guy, I am going to bring in a little E13, which is going to darken up his skin tone just a little bit. My husband is a little, well, a lot darker skin than I am, and he has really dark hair and really dark eyes. And you're going to see that come through on this card project. 
Now, once I get that 13, E13 blended on there, I am going to blend it out with the E11 and then go over all of it just lightly with the E50 one more time. And for the hair, I'm using the E77 and the E79 markers. And I'm just going to really get into those little places. I'm bringing in the dark color from the very outside corners, and I'm kind of keeping it a little lighter towards the inside. But quite honestly, these colors are so dark that there's hard to it's kind of hard to see a lot of contrast between them. I should have picked colors that are a little further apart probably for a little more impact with that dark and light. Now, I don't know what just made the camera shake there. <laughs> Somebody probably slammed the door or something like that. But I am putting a little zig two-way glue over the top of the shirt area and I'm positioning my plaid cutout portion. And to cover the parts where I didn't cut perfectly on his pants and around that shirt, I am just gonna take a B39, this is a dark blue marker, and color in those areas. And then I can add my zig two-way glue right over the top of that place my pants on there and then no one will ever know that I didn't cut perfectly. Now you'll see that the pants are hanging off the bottom. I'm going to just trim those off and then I am going to work on his goatee. And to do this I decided to use a colored pencil. Now a marker is going to soak into the paper and kind of bleed out a little bit as it goes into the fibers of the paper and so I didn't want to use a marker for this. So I decided to use a colored pencil and just kind of dotted and tapped it until I filled in a little goatee for my guy here. Now this heart is from another new stamp set from the Essentials by Ellen Line this month. This is the Date Night, or is it Date Night? It's a date? One of those. <laughs> I'll have it linked in the description below, so be sure to check that out. And I'm stamping those in some Catherine Pooler polished ink onto some white cardstock and die cutting them with the coordinating die. And then I position those onto my card front using some foam adhesive. Now I'm going to show you this part, but I, I ended up changing it in the end. I'm putting some pattern paper on my card front here, and um, I'm going to put a little bit of that navy cardstock down the front of my card panel there too. But I wanted to talk to you about why I think we struggle with masculine cards. And I think that's because when we think masculine cards, a lot of times we think we can't embellish them. And for a lot of us, we don't feel like the card is finished until it's embellished. But I definitely think you can embellish masculine cards. You just have to use the right types of embellishments. Now, I'm going to pause that thought for just a minute, and I'm going to show you this little pen die. You cannot see through it. So what I'm doing is I'm die cutting it from the white cardstock and then trimming out that negative piece. And I'm going to place that negative piece right over my stamped image and then nestle the die right into that negative piece and I'll hold both the die and that negative die cut in place with some delicate surface painters tape and I'll run that through my die cut machine and I will have a perfectly cut out pin that I can then slip into his pocket that I cut open using a craft knife. Now I was saying about embellishments. You can definitely embellish a masculine card and I encourage you that even though this is a masculine card, don't be afraid to use something that's a little bit sparkly, like I just used my little aqua shimmer pen on the hearts there. Don't be afraid to use something a little bit shiny. I have definitely used sequins on masculine cards before. But if you're looking for some more masculine embellishments, find things like wood veneers and natural fibers like burlap and hemp twine. Those make for really great accents on masculine cards. Now the other thing that you can do is you can use sequins that are kind of flat in color rather than iridescent or shiny. Or you can use enamel dots or like enamel drops like Tonic Nouveau drops. Those are all great ways to add embellishments to masculine cards without it feeling overly feminine. So I took some cool gray markers and I added some shading around my sentiment as well as my guy there and that really helps him kind of pop off the front of the card, makes him feel a little more dimensional even though this is very close to a one layer card. <laughs> And now I am tying some hemp twine, this is from Lawn Fawn, right around the top of my card. And you'll see that I put some tonic, um, I'm not sure what they call it, they're gloss 
stuff. It's like glossy accents, but it's by Tonic. I put that over the hearts there. And I'm finishing off this card with some wood veneer star accents that I've had in my stash for a really long time. Now, if you don't have these wood veneer star accents, there are some fabulous new star dies in this release, and I encourage you to go over to my blog and check it out because I'll have the whole release linked there. You could die cut those from some wood paper and make your own wood type embellishments, and that is a really fun way to embellish these masculine cards. So there you have it. You can see I changed it up a little bit, and I ended up taking the card front off and putting it onto a slate gray card base from the essentials by Ellen line it is stamped with a tone on tone kind of mesh or linen background just to give it a little bit of texture and that completes my masculine card for today featuring the new essentials by Ellen leading gentleman now over on my blog I have these tips listed out with some other tips for creating masculine cards and hopefully those will be things that will kind of get the wheels turning in your head and help you create your own masculine card designs. As always, I will have links to the featured products used in this project in the description at YouTube. But like I said before, head on over to my blog over there. I'll have more still shots, more information, more tips and tricks for creating masculine cards and a complete list of supplies as well as the Copic colors that I used. Thanks for stopping by today and thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, be sure to like this video and click subscribe and turn on those notifications so you won't miss any of my paper crafting and card making video tutorials here. Thanks for hanging out with me today. And until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day.